Hi again everybody, welcome to my latest video. Well in this one I'm going to show you something really interesting about the Sony ZV-1. It's software that was not originally available to it when it first was released back in July, but it has since come out. And what you can do is you can use this camera, this DSLR compact camera from Sony, as a webcam. And it works pretty good actually. The way it functions and the way it connects does work as you will see. I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. If you're going to do it this way, you don't want to have the batteries in here. These batteries don't last long to start with and when you're connected as a webcam they're really not charging. So what happens is the battery can run out rather quickly. So you need to get yourself one of these adapters. Some people refer to it as a dummy battery and it, it sits into the compartment where the battery normally goes and at the other end of it you have a standard USB-A connector and you can plug it right into the AC with the proper adapter to it. And I'll put links to these things in the notes of this video, you know, just in case you're interested in getting that. But you do need to put it in place, make sure it's oriented right, get it in here, put it in, make sure it snaps in just like the battery, close it. Unfortunately though, there's no little slice in the plastic or at least something you could pull out of the way like my Panasonic FZ1000 camera has. So you have to sort of leave it ajar unless you want to try cutting into your plastic which I don't, I, I wouldn't do that. So it's really up to you, but it doesn't need to close all the way. If you're putting it on a tripod or even on the standard hand grip available for this camera, that'll work fine too. And, and you know, you're not staying there that long and it's not going to put that much pressure really. So that's how I'd recommend doing it. Now to get this to work, we're going to have to load some special software into the PC. It's, uh, it's from Sony and it's called the uh, Imaging Edge Webcam Software. And I'll show you how to download that and install it. Pretty straightforward. You just got to find the right file before you do that. What I'm also going to do is show you the configuration that you have to do. And there's a specific set of configuration things that you have to do to the camera in order to get it to function properly as a webcam. Not all options will work. So I'll show you that on the screen. Also, I have this Nexigo standard webcam that I did a review on a while back, and I'm going to throw this into the mix. So I'll be able to see how it compares between the Sony as a webcam and this Nexico. And there are differences, believe me. Also, I'm going to do some specific testing related to the inherent delay that's caused through the system and through any software layers that are in place. Now, every webcam, you know, even this one here, that's meant for USB, will have a delay automatically by the, the operating system software, the application software, and a few, depending on what's running in your PC as well. But this one, as you'll see, there seems to be a little bit more of a delay. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as I demonstrate it. So anyway, without any further ado, let me show you how to set the thing up, how to download the software, and I'll show you some testing. If you get anything out of this video that you find useful, please consider subscribing. Thanks. Hi, I just wanted to show a comparison between these two cameras in USB. So the one in the upper left, this one here, that's the Nexigo. And the one that's in the lower right, that one over there, that is the Sony ZV-1 being used as a webcam. So what do you think? And I look pretty good. And the Sony ZV-1 is pretty good, but plus the Sony ZV-1, I have more power over it. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can do all kinds of things that I can't easily do with the other camera. I mean, I guess more expensive versions of that may be able to do it, but not this one. So I just wanted to show the two of them together and uh, for you to compare. I'm not taking sound in through either one of them. The sound is coming from my Blue Yeti. So uh, that's going to be a totally independent thing. But sound does go into through, through either or both of these. Believe me, I've tested that separately. Let's go ahead and install the software that's needed to use your Sony camera, in this case the ZV-1, as a webcam. The easiest way to do that is open up a Google and type in Imaging Edge Webcam. And there's a choice here. Make sure it's Sony that you're picking. It doesn't matter what country it's from. I believe Japan is their worldwide headquarters anyway. So we're going to go into Download Imaging Edge Webcam Sony. And you get this choice. You get this nice decision-making box. Which kind of camera do you have? Now, a lot of them all work the same. But just to be complete, let's go and pick our ZV-1 camera. 
So it's down here. I'll click on ZV1 and then I'm going to say download for Windows. It's now downloading it. I E W. And I'm just going to click down the lower left hand corner on open file, extracting it. And then we're going to install it. You got to agree, of course, and then we can install. And we finished. So now we have the Imaging Edge webcam software installed. Now there's a lot of other features with Imaging Edge desktop, but you don't really need that for purposes of what we're showing here. Close this, go look at what we have to start. And I believe we should see the Imaging Edge software. Yep, Imaging Edge webcam. Now there's two things in here. There's the actual help file and a USB reset. USB reset is very important. There are some situations where you get into, as I mentioned uh, in a previous segment, that the USB could get into a really strange state when you have the camera set to the wrong things. So what I like to do is just click on this, right click on it, say pin to start, and there it is. The USB reset is available if I need it. And that's only if it sort of looks like it starting, starts getting USB errors when I connect the camera to it. But now the software is fully installed. Okay, let me show you how the camera has to be configured in order to use it as a webcam. There are two settings we have to change. First thing we do is we go into the menuing system and we go into the network tab. That's the globe there at the top. You can either go to other menus or not, but it's the, you want the first screen, the first of two screens under the globe setting, which is for networks. And then you want to go down to the PC remote function. So with the PC remote function, you click on that and by default it's off and you want to change it to on. So you click on it, arrow up, click on that. Now it's on and now we can leave the menuing system. Just hit menu twice and we get out of it. The second thing you need to change is right now I have it in a still picture mode, the programmed auto still pictures. So I'm going to have to change the mode, which is the button at the top of the camera, click on that. And as you can see, it, the little dash there is actually on the P. But this whole set, P, A, S, M, those are all still picture modes. You want to go to one of the movie modes, which is up here. So there's one that has a small eye on it. That's the best one to choose for webcam. And that means intelligent auto for movies. There's also an intelligent auto for still pictures, but you want the intelligent audio for movies. So you would actually arrow up to that and then hit enter. Now, when I do that, I'm going to lose the menuing system because this camera cannot display on through the HDMI, the menus, whenever you're not in one of the still picture modes. So I arrow up and click it. I wanted to see what the display looks like. It's not going to show what's on the display because it's, it's not, it's in the movie mode. Clean. It shows a clean output right now. There is another option if I wanted to change that would allow you to make the features or options within this particular screen to show, but I'm not going to bother turning that on right now. Okay. What I have set up here is four images using OBS. I have two cameras pointed at the screen and I have a screen capture at the same time. So this upper left one is the Nexico USB connected you know, to the computer through a USB. The only way it can do it over on the upper right is the ZV-1 when I connect it as a USB. You can't connect it both as a USB and through HDMI using the Elgato at the same time. So right now, the only one that is on is the lower right where the ZV-1 is connected through the HDMI. And then on the left, the lower left, I have the actual screen capture of one of my screens showing the millisecond stopwatch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start this and you'll see the different rates at which they run. So I'll start this and I'm going to do a screen capture of this actually separately so that I can get a good picture of it. And then I can compare the numbers afterwards. So I have one set of screen captures now. Okay. Here it is uh, actually now switched. So now I'm using the USB connection through the imaging edge webcam software into OBS and we'll run the same test. Start it. And then I'll do a screen capture and then I'll stop it. And now we got another image and we'll see what the difference is in terms of what showed up on the screen capture and we'll see the difference in the timing. Okay. That completes this video on using 
the Sony ZV-1 compact DSLR camera as a webcam. It does work. I don't particularly like the excessive delay that it added. Kind of keep in mind that what's happening is we're going through an extra level of software. There's a normal delay whenever you connect up anything USB to a PC. It's going to go through several layers of application and operating system software in order to get available to the application for whatever purpose it is, whether it's to go into Zoom or to go into OBS or whatever. But this particular one using that uh, the Sony software, the Imaging Edge webcam software that you have to download from Sony that I showed in this video, it added a considerable amount, an additional 60, 65 milliseconds of delay from what was seen in the camera to what was seen on the computer. Anyway, other than that, it does work and it is available as an option to you. I also did not like the resolution. One thing about doing it in this mode as a webcam, you don't get full 1080p out of it. It's really getting you something that's only about two thirds that resolution. May not notice it. I mean, and there are advantages as we could see because this is a real camera that you can zoom and you can change f-stop and all sorts of things to it. So that's a real advantage, exposure mode, whatever. But the fact that it doesn't give you a full size image, at least in 1080p, um, is a real you know letdown with this. So hopefully you got something out of this video. And if you did, do me a favor and at least consider subscribing to my channel. My head will pop up here in a moment. Click on it, follow along and subscribe. It would really help this channel, believe me. Anyway, thanks for watching and I look forward to showing you some videos in the near future. Take care.